Good morning, or afternoon, depending on where and when you watch this video in this great diocese of ours, the Diocese of Olympia. As has become the custom, I wanted to greet you before convention, share with you a bit of what you might expect there, and perhaps put some questions in your mind and heart as we move into our time together at SeaTag. Our theme for convention this year is Living Our Baptism. It is a theme that is vast in its scope and yet focused and singular in its specific call to us as Christians. Your staff and I have worked on this theme and we see it to be much more than a catchy phrase or idea to frame our convention. We see it instead as the beginning of a year-long exploration and reflection on what living our baptism means and what it calls us to. You will be hearing much more about that in the days to come and at our convention. At this convention, our guest speaker will be the Right Reverend James Magnus, Bishop Suffragan for Federal Ministries. In this office, it is Bishop Magnus' task to oversee the chaplains and service men and women in our military, in our hospitals, and in our prisons. I've asked him to come here and to share with you more about this ministry and the great need we have as Episcopalians to be in these places, living our baptism, ministering to those who work, whose work it is to defend our country, or ministering to those who are ill or in prison, as laity or ordained, as baptized people. He has agreed to offer workshops during every time slot on Friday, and I hope you will avail yourselves of one of those. You're not going to believe the energy and commitment of this man, and I'm so glad he will be with us. Another major presentation at this convention will be that of Russ Crabtree. He's the consultant who has worked with us during this last year as we look deeply into who we see ourselves to be as a diocese, the journey we see ourselves as traveling in these last five years, and where we find ourselves now. Our governing bodies have already seen this presentation, and I think I can safely say it is a positive one. Russ told us that this is the best return rate he's ever experienced, and that is thanks to all of you who took the time and have the interest to respond. I don't want to steal all of his thunder, but he will also share that of all the various groups he analyzed, every one of them, from governing bodies to staff to laypersons, all are in the same place when it comes to where we find ourselves now. And that place is exciting. It is a place of energy, motivation, and preparation. It reveals that we are collectively in an excellent position to work toward reimagining reimagining our diocese and therefore the church. He will go into this much more, but suffice it to say, I believe we got what we needed from this consultation, and it will provide us a great transition. Because what you will also witness at this convention is the completion of that phase, phase one, that being a look at ourselves and what we think we represent, who we are, to a new phase for next year with a new consultant, who I'm happy to tell you is Greg Rhodes, a lay member of Good Shepherd Vancouver, a member of Leaders for Mission that have offered their expertise and help to this diocese for several years, an author, and from my point of view, a lover of the study of systems, especially as it pertains to church. He will lead this next phase along with a steering team who have already been recruited or are currently being recruited over this next year to look in another direction, one that may in fact be much more difficult this is, after all, a true experiment. Our task in this next phase is to look outside ourselves, to check the pulse of those who never darkened our doors but sometimes wonder about us. What are their perceptions of us? The hope is that with these two perspectives clearer, the inside look and the outside look, we will begin the work in these next years of looking at that gap, the difference between how we see ourselves and how those outside us see and describe who we are. We don't know if this will work, but I do feel it's an important question. One we, the church, have to be concerned about, and one that deserves some attention and effort. Of course, one of the major reasons for a convention is for you to receive the budget for the coming year. As in all years, this was a challenge. But once again, through the good work of your budget and finance committee, diocesan council and staff and all of you because there would be no budget without all of you. Once again this year you will be presented a balanced budget. 
while maintaining, once again, all funds that go directly back to congregations. No reductions were made there. Reductions were made to diocesan staff, and once again, reorganization will be re the result of that. And with that, I have to commend our staff, your staff, for their resilience in making those changes over several years. They've taken on more, adapted, and done it all with great commitment and grace. All of that said, we believe this budget begins to show a movement in the positive direction. And that is remarkable. The diocese remains strong, even as we make these needed adjustments. Our budget continues to reflect our focus and our values, and while we may not always agree with that direction, this document gives us the basis for continued discernment. Your assessment payments make that all possible, and I know how difficult that can be. I want to thank you personally and commend you for your good stewardship and diligence in making good on those. Even though we are not recommending a decrease in assessments this year, we are definitely continuing to look at how to do that. And the assessment task force appointed last year by me continues its work into this next year. Our hope is to find the most equitable way to do this and to continue in the hope of leaving more funds for local use. We have weathered a two-year 1% drop, which has been a good and now we can say successful experiment and I've not given up on more reductions in the future. When I say our budget is moving in a positive direction, this is my point. Our mission is not to survive. That is not the Christian call. We are called instead to transform ourselves and the world around us. Our mission is an abundant one based in the eternal and radical grace of Jesus Christ. We don't do all of this to survive. We do all of this to build ourselves up to an even better place, a stronger place, to proclaim the gospel and to share that good news with the world. If we together can move in that direction, then we will indeed be living our baptism. My thanks to all of you for your dedication, commitment, and leadership. I'll see you in SeaTac in a few weeks, if not before. I appreciate you, and I wish you every blessing.